This conference will now be recorded. So let me introduce myself. My name is Raja Shekhar and you can call me Raj. And coming to my experience, I'm having totally 15 plus years of real time experience and more than 24 years of training experience. And I have done trainings to major IT companies like uh, TCS, Vipro, Virtues or Delight to list out it goes more than 50 companies. And I've given more than 500 plus online trainings into Java technology and 2000 plus classroom trainings. So that's the background from end. And the course what we are going to learn over here is we call it as full stack Java. Full stack Java. In this full stack Java, I have divided into some categories. Like we initially start with the core Java. Then we go with the next one, web technologies. Then advanced Java. Then the next and very, very important one, frameworks. Then we discuss some of the real time tools during our course. Then finally, we are going to do a project. Coming to this core Java, coming to this core Java, we even call it as Java SC. Java SC. Java SC stands for Java SC stands for Java Standard Edition. Java SC stands for what? Java Standard Edition. And the main use of going with Java SC is used to develop stand alone or desktop applications use it to develop standalone or desktop applications so can anyone take examples of standalone applications uh, like calculator office, office. All right calculator ms office all these are examples of standalone or desktop applications paint all these things once we download and install then we need not connect to other system to run the application. They are independent. That's the reason the name has come standalone. And in this core Java, we are going to discuss the contents like initially we go with the Java introduction, which I'm going to do in tomorrow's class. Then we discuss about the Java features. Then we'll be learning how to download and install Java. And we are going to see 16 version. We'll be learning how to download and install Java 16 version. Then we'll be developing. We'll be developing a Java application. At command prompt. Since in my case, I'm having Windows operating system. I'll be showing it command prompt. The same way we can work on Linux or Mac. I'll be elaborating at that time. Then the next one, we'll be learning about download and install eclipse ide in our course i'm going to make use of a ide called as eclipse then we'll be learning how to develop a java application in eclipse ide so this completes the introduction part like we'll be knowing what is the use of java and how to develop java applications then the next one we move to java basics we move to java basics in this basics will be learning about the basic terminology of programming like uh, the meaning of keyword data type variable operators operators if statement which statement while loop do while loop for loop like this so more of programming so this is the place where we increase our programming and logical skills and once i start with the basics part i'll be giving assignments to you which you need to do in do it and submit it back the next one arrays can anyone say what is the use of arrays I mean, you can store multiple data into a single variable. Right. Collection of data. Whenever you want to collect data, we make use of arrays into one single variable. The next and very, very important one 
Java object oriented programming. Java OP. In this, we'll be learning about the meaning of class, object, constructors, static keyword, then packages, inheritance, polymorphism, then access modifiers, inner classes, then abstract classes, interfaces, encapsulation like this. So this will take totally five to six classes and very, very important one. If you are good with this object oriented programming, then only we can able to understand the remaining topics of Java. This will become the base for Java totally. The next one, we move to the next one, land package. Java dot land package. The meaning of package is like a folder where it is a collection of classes, related classes. In this, we'll be learning about object class, string class, some of the predefined classes we'll be learning. String class, string buffer class, string builder class, math class, wrapper classes, like this. Hello, Shivani. Hello, Shivani. Yeah, at this side is Rashikar, and you can call me Raj. And uh, I'm the trainer to take this full stack Java training. Just I'm giving the list of contents what we are going to discuss during the course. Only that part we are doing. The next one exception handling exception handling so the meaning of exception is like a runtime error once it occurs the remaining part of code will get terminated to avoid that abnormal termination only we go for exception handling very very important topic then the next one multi-threading can anyone take examples of multitasking I mean, I can just tell in a plain English. <laughs> yeah, sure the technicality. Something yeah, like uh, working simultaneously uh, with the same resource. Yeah, related to software. Okay. Uh, while we minimize one of the application, uh, we we used to work on uh, different application. Mm -hmm. Right. So just running mm -hmm. different applications in our operating system. Like in my case, I have opened browser, notepad, go to meeting like this. You are listening to the songs and working with Java applications like that. So opening multiple applications, that is only multitasking. Then have you seen threads anytime? Like in task manager, something it will show as threads. Mm, yeah. Like RAM or something. Right. They are, they are related to hardware. So related to software. The meaning of thread is like if you take the example like our go to meeting only. Go to meeting is a task. In this, I can show my screen, it's a thread. I can record the class, it's a thread. I can speak with you, it's a thread. Got it? The activities what if we perform under one task, they are called as what threads. And if I'm able to do the things simultaneously, that means the application supports multi threading. So I'm recording the class, I'm speaking with you, I'm even typing it means I'm able to do multiple things simultaneously. That means the application is multi-threaded. Got it everyone? The meaning of threads? The main use of threads is to increase performance of applications. That is also one more use of going with threads. So when we come to topic threads, we'll take some more good examples. Then the next and important one, collections. By using arrays also we can collect the elements and by using collections also, we can collect the elements. The drawback of arrays is like, when you go for arrays, we have to mention the size. When you go with arrays, we have to mention the size, that is the number of elements which we want to collect. That means arrays are fixed size. 
once we give the size as 50 so we can collect maximum 50 elements only we cannot decrease or we cannot increase so when you want to go with the variable size then we go with collections collections are used to collect elements of variable size unlimited collection of elements very very important topic then the next one we go with the java 8 features like lambda expressions functional interface stream api okay. the next and very very simple topic io package the meaning of io is like input output what are the programs we are writing the data what we use during runtime is it temporary data or permanent data A permanent no it is temporary right the data what we use during runtime it is temporary yeah okay because it is stored in ram memory it is stored in ram memory so where we can store data permanently a local drive for a server right so hard disk we can store the data permanently in hard disk either in the form of data files or database tables this io package is mainly used to manage the data files it's for data files the, the next one we go with SQL concepts or database concepts. SQL concepts or database concepts. This we do by using MySQL database. So we are going to learn by using MySQL. Then the next one and very, very important one, JDBC. The next one is what? JDBC, Java Database Connectivity. From our Java program, we can connect to a database by using what? jdbc concept very very important so these are the contents what we are going to discuss in our code part then once we have done with the code java just a second Once we have done with the code Java, the next one we go with web technologies. So this even we call it as UI design. It's mainly for front end purpose, user interface. And the contents what we are going to discuss and under this web technologies are like, we go with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, XML, JSON, and angular so these are the contents what we are going to discuss under this web technologies angular is very very important the, the next one we go with advanced java even we call it as java e java e stands for java enterprise edition java e stands for what java enterprise edition and the main use of going for Java EE is use it to develop web applications. Use it for what? To develop web applications. Like you might have seen this Amazon, Citibank, Book My Show, all these are web applications. Make my trip, all these are. To develop web applications, we go for Java EE. And the contents what we are going to discuss over here is servlets and JSP. JSP stands for Java Server Pages. The next and very, very important one, frameworks. This is very, very important. Any project you take nowadays, we are making use of frameworks. But to understand frameworks, these are the prerequisite. Without having the prior knowledge, core Java, all these things, we cannot enter into frameworks. Here, we are going to learn some of the important frameworks like Hibernate framework. Then we go with web services. This is not a framework, okay? Then we go with the spring framework under this spring framework we are going to learn some of the modules we are having so many modules but we'll be learning some of the important modules like spring core module spring bean module spring dao module very very important it's mainly for database connections 
where we it goes with three sub modules like spring jdbc spring orm where we integrate with hibernate and spring data then we go with the next one spring mvc model very very important one it's mainly used to develop web applications it's for web applications then we go with spring boot module then spring rest module spring rest module so these are the modules what we'll be learning under spring framework very very important one then even we go with the next one microservices we go for microservices using spring boot we develop microservices using spring boot then, during our course we will be learning some of the real time tools like we will be going with junit maven then we go with github then access to tool lombok We go with the Jira like this. Then, finally, we'll be developing a project using Spring Boot and Angular. Using Spring Boot and Angular framework, we are going to develop a project here. Then, the total duration of the course goes with approximately 50 to 60 hours. Depends on how you take, it will go with 50 to 60 hours, maximum 60 hours. And the time of the class is Monday to Friday. Remember, Monday to Friday at 8 p.m. IST. Monday to Friday, 8 p.m. IST. And the class will go for maximum one hour. The class will go for what? Maximum one hour. Okay. I never cross one hour. So, you, you can plan accordingly your timings. Okay. And whatever the link share to you, that same link you can use it for joining tomorrow's class and even for next week. For tomorrow and next week, the link will remain same to join the class. Then the class is getting recorded. Once the class is done, this recording will be shared to you after the class. It's a regular practice after the class. The recording will be shared to you after completion of class. Within two hours, you are going to get the documents and recordings. The text document, whatever I'm typing, the programs, whatever I show, the diagrams, whatever I draw, and the recording, these all things will be shared to you after the class. It's a regular practice, right? 